So hello everybody watching and listening and you're very welcome to another episode of the Bootcast. Today joining me all the way from Abbey Leaks is Gary O'Keefe from One Eye on the World. Gary, welcome to the Bootcast. Uh, can you tell us a bit about yourself? Well, yeah, <clears throat> I suppose like everybody else listen to this to this um, podcast, I'm an adventurer and like traveling. Um, I run a, a travel blog called One Eye on the World, which is a bit of a I'd say lackluster, chaotic, un, um, uncontrolled uh, uh, blog, um, but we, we're doing some pretty cool stuff, I suppose. Brilliant. Um, so what's, what's your latest challenge then, I suppose? <clears throat> okay, well, I suppose um, <clears throat> when I met you at our headquarters, I should just explain that uh, the, the, uh, the blog is called One Eye in the World because obviously uh, from meeting me, you figured out that I've got one eye, which was an accidental uh, uh, addition to my, to, my, um, to my skills. So rather than kind of let it uh, dominate everything, we, we take the make out of everything that happens really. So, so let's do the one eye in the world thing and make it, make it, a, make it a thing. Right. So I've, been doing, <clears throat> I've been doing a lot of adventure traveling motorcycling across the world and then uh, obviously I had a, an accident uh, in in um, in Siberia in 2014 which kind of curtailed my ability to ride off-road I guess I ride bikes but not, not to the same level so I broke both my legs my ankle my arm my knee all that kind of stuff so I got into four by fouring <clears throat> and when when you're in a motorcycle adventure you get it hard to, to drop that sense of freedom that you can get from motorcycling so all of my friends are still motorcyclists so this year we've come up with a plan to do something epic. So we're gonna we're gonna have a, a go at setting a Guinness World Record attempt at driving and riding the longest trip on ice. So literally, what that means is we're a group of six international motorcyclists and me in my UAS van, which I'll tell you about in a second. And we're going out to Siberia to um, Lake Baikal, which is the deepest uh, lake in the world, freshwater lake in the world, and holds, to my mind. To my knowledge, I mean about 20% of the world's fresh water. So it's pretty big. It's about 700 kilometers long. Uh, so we're going to drive from a town called Irkutsk up to a town called Sludyanka, which is the start of the lake. And literally, we're going to drive the whole way on that lake on ice. No nice. road beneath the skies. Jesus. That, that's, that's crazy. Um, <laughs> that's just... That's a little bit crazy. <laughs> That is mental. Um, so we'll, we'll come back to that. So, what what was your what was your first kind of expedition like? My first ever expedition, I'd say, was pretty tame. Even though we thought it was very adventurous, myself and uh, a couple of mates went with three of us. Actually, went with two motorcycles to Austria to pick up another bike and bring it back. I mean, that sounds like nothing now, but for us, it was the first thing we'd ever done back in the early noughties. And um, I carried one one friend on the back of my bike. We were really stupid. Like we we, we rode from here to uh, um, I was going to say Afghanistan, from here to Austria and back in five days. Like the whole thing was, well, get there and get back. We didn't understand that traveling was like about the whole journey and all the rest of it. Yeah. Uh, the second more interesting one was once I got the the bug. Um, I rode from. I decided to ride from Cape Town uh, in South Africa, basically to Abu Leaks. So I rode from Cape Town to Israel in one go. It took me 37 days. And then from Israel, I shipped to Greece and rode back. It took me another two weeks. So, uh, and that was completely solo. No backup, no film crew, no support crew. Nothing <laughs> like that. Just, just a bag of food. Jesus. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, so can you, t can you tell me about, about your eye or... Yeah, so the, my, my eye, I mean, look, people, things happen to people all the time, right? And to my mind, if something has already happened, you can't really do all that about it. It's happened. It's over. And no matter how bad you feel about it or how, or how unjustified it was or, you know, how robbed you feel, and you're probably right to feel all that, it's actually pointless. Because once the incident has happened, there's nothing going to change it. You can't bring it back. So you got to look at the forward bit. That's what I did. So I, I had a very simple accident, actually. I was, I was working on a farm. I was 17 years old, like every kind of college kid looking to earn a few quid extra. Yeah. Uh, I was operating some machinery, driving a tractor, actually. And um, although I probably wouldn't even know how to do it now. But anyway, then I was a bit skilled in the old farming circles. But I was driving a tractor. Something flew out of the machine at the back, which is a baler. Missed about 400 obstacles before it hit me and then went straight to my eye. 
So Jeez. that's the incident. Jeez. That sounds terrible. But now you're in a situation where you have to say to yourself, right, I can, I can roll around in this forever and it can mm-hmm. be terrible forever. Or I can say, right, that was shit. That's a fact. Now, to move on, I've got to do the next bit. You can't stop the past. So yeah, you got to move on. So that's what I did. And that's where the, that's where the One Eye in the World blog came out. I said, well, I want to travel. I want to do this, that, and the other. And everybody says to you, by the way, oh, you can't do that because of your eye. You know, first thing for me, well, I was I was probably shit at hurling anyway. Uh, but then when, when I lost my eye, somebody said, oh, you can't play hurling anymore. Yeah. So well, what, now, now I'm even more determined. So I, I did more hurling in my later career than I did in my younger career just to prove a point. And I was still bad at it. Anybody that's listening will know I was terrible at it. <laughs> Leisha. Uh, yeah. <laughs> not for me. Not for me. No, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I, wasn't, I, was, I was barely good enough to get onto a junior Abbey League team. <laughs> I mean, barely. Barely good enough. Brilliant. Um, your phrase is, what, what can possibly go wrong? Yeah. What's, yeah, yeah. what's the story behind that? <laughs> well... I suppose losing an eye is is it was it started a bit of a trend, so I tend to have a lot of accidents because I don't know maybe because I don't pay enough attention or because things just happen to certain people or whatever. But when you start to travel, and I'm sure you know this as well, the best stories that you have from traveling tend to be from the greatest disasters that ever happen, right? <laughs> so, so you know, a sense of humor gets you a long way in this world, particularly when you're in in trouble, you know. <laughs> and uh, I kind of kept saying this thing, oh, look, somebody said, oh, look, Gary, be careful. You know, what, what, what about this? What about that? So like, come on, guys, what could possibly go wrong? And eventually, well, as soon as I said it, everything started going wrong. And people said, well, just stop saying that. And then it, it just became funny. So, yeah, so now it's kind of a bit of our brand. You know, we, we yeah. kind of laugh, laugh in the face of adversity. Uh, if it's a challenge, you know, give it the two fingers and kind yeah. of just take it on and say, look, what actually is the worst that could possibly go wrong? You know, Oh, I will I miss my flight? Well, that's you know not a disaster. Maybe it causes you missing a flight cause, causes you to meet somebody else or whatever. Yeah, I, I I broke the wheel off off my jeep out in the middle of the Siberian taiga, and I mean the middle of it one time in 2016, and it was a complete disaster. And I wound up losing nine days off my trip, but I wound up in the nine days learning more about Siberian culture <laughs> and drinking probably too much vodka than I never have ever seen. I got a trip in a helicopter that was was definitely not well past its NC, NCT day. <laughs> and I have the best pictures, the best videos, and the best stories from the worst situations. So, yeah, it's a kind of a thing now that I believe in. If you say it, something is definitely going to go wrong. But the way you look at it is, well, did it actually go wrong or was it just funny? Yeah, brilliant. Um, so I suppose all these exhibitions and traveling around the world re- requires a lot of time. Like, So are you... Do you work for yourself or are you retired or how, how can you do all this? Well, and down I'm, I might look old, but I'm actually not that old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in my 40s. Um, although my wife pointed out to me last night that uh, you know you're no longer in your mid-40s now because you're 46. You're, you're actually in your late 40s, technically. <laughs> so, okay, okay. so yeah, I work for myself. I run a company, a uh, couple of companies actually. With my, my main company is called Crew Resourcing. It's an international um, recruitment agency. We have offices in, in Dublin, in London, in Kosovo, and in, in Bishkek. And we, we, you know, it's it's a heavy job. And yeah. it's, if people looked at me to say, they would say, look, you know, maybe, maybe you're doing too much, you mm. know, or maybe you have too much on your plate. And and that's right. But what, you know, the old the, the, the old phrase that backs up that is, if you want something done, ask a busy person, you know? Yeah. So I suppose for me, it's it's about finding solutions that uh, allow the work to be done. And the way I, I view it is you will always make mistakes, but it, you're only in business for one reason, and that's to make money. There's no, anyone that says they're in it for the love of the game or whatever, they're kidding themselves. You're, you're in work, in business <laughs> for, for money. Now, yeah. what I choose to do is I, I, I reverse the whole thinking. Somebody, I got a business mentor and he says, you know, why do you want to build a crew? And I said, well, I want to have the best agency in, in the country, you know? I said, well, why? And I said, well, because it's, it's good. Was, That's bullshit. Why do you want to have something like that unless it's going to do something for you? I said, okay, well, I want to make a lot of money then. He said, well, well why do you want money? I said, well, I, that's a stupid question. Everybody wants money. I said, well, come on, Gary, you know, don't, don't be an asshole. Don't lie to yourself. So eventually I, I said, I'm paying this guy to give me advice and he's being stupid and I'm going to get rid of him. 
So to get rid of him, I said, okay, then two fingers to you. I want to earn money so that I can travel more. And he said, great, how much? I said, okay, I want to earn money so that I can travel 12 weeks in the year. And he says, now we're talking, now yeah. it's four. So everything I do in work ways, and I do a lot, um, it, the premise is, okay, the, the starting point is I need to travel for, okay, maybe 10 weeks in the year. And whatever I make or do or, or take on, that's sacred, that doesn't move. Because I took the view that, you know, too many people say to themselves, I can't do something because I have a job. I can't do something because I don't have money. I can't do something because my partner won't let me. And all of those things are 100% correct because you're allowing them to be correct. Yeah. So the starting point should be for me, and even the way I think about it, not to lecture anyone, but this is what I believe. I said, well, the starting point is if I want to do that, what needs to be in place for me to do it? Otherwise, I don't really want to do it. So, yeah. so that's the way I kind of start off every year business-wise and home-wise. And, you know, I mean, you, you've got to have support of your family. I mean, my, my wife, to be fair, is very cool. She comes on a few trips with me. She has her goals. I have mine. We sit down and talk about why I want to do something. And uh, she says, look, you know, nobody should stop something, somebody doing something else if that's yeah. their passion. So no, for me, I, I can't stop her doing something if she wants to do it. She wouldn't dream of stopping me doing something. I think we allow ourselves to be so stereotyped around that kind of thing sometimes. And it's, it's probably it's probably the definition of madness for me is just assuming I am not allowing you to do that because, you know, come on. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Brilliant. Um, cool. So let's go back to the the current challenge then the, on the bike I'll take. <laughs> The current challenge, the current mission. Okay, this one, I will admit, this one is probably uh, the most dangerous that I've done. Now, bear in mind, I've ridden solo the whole way across Africa. I've driven my Jeep into the north of Afghanistan. I've crossed the road of bones solo half the time and with a team the rest of the time. I've done some dangerous stuff. Uh, in, in January, I, I drove from Mexico to Panama, the whole way through Central America, through all the banditos, all the places where... <laughs> People says you can't go. This one is on top of the pile in terms of danger because we're driving vehicles on a temporary surface and beneath the temporary surface, if it breaks, there is one mile of water. So you're drowning for a long time. If you're half a mile down, you're still drowning. You're still going down. So we've got to respect that. Yeah, we've got to respect it. And, and um, I suppose the, the cost, uh, I saw a message you sent me this morning that the the cost of not following your dreams is, is not as big as the, uh, or the cost of following your dreams is not as big as the cost of not following them. Yeah. So look, th this is a, it's a hard to, you can't rub out this kind of passion. And I suppose that's again, the difference between hobby and passion is hobby is something that you do when you're okay with it. But mm. you know, if it's too much trouble, I won't do it. But passion never goes away. So, so all of the guys on the team are the, are the same. They're all scared. Um, they're all, from late 30s to late 50s, actually. So it's a team of, of uh, six, seven people. Um, we're we're going to be literally watching out for cracks in the ice. Uh, the, the the lake itself, like, is famous. It's, it's um, you know, it holds a lot of water, obviously, but it's got its own life, um, its, own, its own life cycle and its own kind of nature. But also it's on top of a few seismic plates. So... We don't even notice them, but you know, you have tremors and Donegal and all that kind of thing in Ireland. But yeah. when this bloody thing uh, shivers a bit, the ice cracks mm -hmm. and minus 40, minus 50 out there at that time of the year when we're doing it in February, the worry is that w when it's solid, it's one meter thick. One meter thick ice is good enough. Even though it moves around a bit, it's good enough to hold up a truck actually. Right. But if it cracks and breaks and it say spreads maybe three meters, it will freeze again overnight, but it's yeah. only frozen about six inches or seven inches or something. Yeah. And you can't find the difference. So we, we had to employ a guy called an ice captain. The ice captain is like a, like a Mick Dundee of the ice. He kind of, <laughs> he's able to read the ice, you know, he's able to look out there and said, no, 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 not that way, this way. So hopefully he knows what he's doing. But this, the cold, harsh reality is that, Every year, some cars go down there and they don't come back up. So, yeah, it's, it's a bit dangerous. But to do it, by the way, we're, we're, there are six of them on motorcycles. We're in the middle of sponsorship. And that should be a company called Royal Enfield, but we're not 100% yet. 
and I'm building um, a van to do it, a specialized van. I could do it with something simpler, but where's the fun in that? So the van we're, we're choosing to build is called a, uh, an UAZ, UAZ, and that's a Russian van. And we're putting it onto a reliable Toyota running gear and chassis. And it's taken me an absolute, I don't know, years of hours of hardship to get this thing done in, in three or four months. So we're doing it because it looks cool, because it's Russian, because it's fun, and because it's hard. So one thing we, we thought about yesterday in, during the build, actually, was if this thing goes down uh, and the, the, you can't open the doors, you can't open the back door, and your nose is in the water and you need to get out, how are you going to get out? So those kind of, of eventualities are like front and center in our mind in the build. So we came up with a great plan. We're going to have an escape, an escape hatch in the, uh, in the roof. Because if you go down, one way out of, out of water is up. So that's our simple plan. But it's it's that risky and that edgy. Jeez, brilliant. Yeah. Um, so h- how far along, like if there was a, a timeline for the actual van being built? Like when I when I when I visited you two weeks ago, you were you were sawing off the back uh, the back yeah. doors and panels to to make sure you yeah. could extend it out. That's right. Well, we have we have the back off and then we have the new pieces welded in. But we got very lucky. Uh, we got um, maybe you were there. I'm not sure. Yeah, you were there. There was a Canadian couple there. I think. When yeah, you yeah, came. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I met that guy CJ Peak. He's he's like an adventurer as well. And I met him one night on a mad session in Kazakhstan about two or three years ago. <laughs> and he just turned up and says, "Hey, dude, I hear you're building a van. I'll come and help." Well, what he thought was he was coming to do like a bit of work on the inside or a bit of tidying up. So he yeah. says, "This is a one year project for two men." Yeah. So we're trying to do a one-year project for two men in 16 weeks. Jesus. <laughs> it'll happen. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, there you go. <laughs> Might be pretty, but it'll happen. Cool. Um, so you mentioned the team. there's a team involved, obviously, in the build and then mm-hmm. doing the mission itself. So who, who have you kind of drafted <laughs> in besides the ice captain and CJ welding and... Yeah. Well, the, the interesting thing is actually, so we're from Abbey Leaks and County Leash, and you think that, you look at stuff on YouTube and you think, you know, all these things only happen in America or in wherever, somewhere where there are talented people. But I believe there's talented people everywhere and it, you just got to pull them together. So we're very lucky around Abbey Leaks. We've got a guy called Matt McGrath, um, who I know from a long time. He's a, like he's a, an unsung hero in terms, of, in terms of being able to do stuff. And he's he's a genius. We've got a, a local guy up the road, Shane um, Shane Hoolan, who's a milling shed. Last night he he milled milled a flywheel, pushed out pushed out um, bushings and fixed a, a ring gear. You know, in in a, in an hour. Yeah. And um, so we got Matt and CJ are the two main build guys at the minute. I have a cousin called Mick Chester. He's a brilliant mechanic. There's a local guy called John Field. There there's a lot of guys around a concentrated area yeah. that if if you're able to pick the skills and pull them together and convince them and sell them the story, yeah. we have a lot of sponsors as well. You know, we've guys called Service Matters, Excellent Signs, Dermot Hughes Cars, uh, PSC. Um, you know, we, we have a lot of them there, AJMS, all, all those guys that are helping to kind of push the dream a bit. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's like eating the old story about eating an elephant, you know? Yeah. If, you, if you try to eat the whole bloody thing, you're not going to manage it. But if you sit down and take it bite by bite, uh, and push it so that's going to happen so that's the build team they're all local guys except for CJ who's all the way from Vancouver and then on the on the riding team we have uh, and some of the riding team actually have helped you know given their time to help build the build workshop because by the way the workshop we're in uh, was a sheep shed so we, we we're not professional we had yeah. a professional workshop so now now it's built yeah. so um, Mark Kemp is from England he's a great mate of mine he's, he's of the BAM on riders fame uh, those guys rode from Magadan to, to Ireland to UK and then they did the Eastern BAM so they're, they're pretty cool fellas him and Kevin Eamons who's also a great mate of mine two of those guys are bulletproof adventurers uh, we've got another adventure friend called Fritz Kreis from Germany uh, he books the trend of a typical German kind of organized uh, organized um, decision <laughs> A bit of unorganized chaos, but he brings a lot of colors to the thing. Uh, we have a cold weather expert writer then called um, uh, Carlos Milauskas, who is a hard dude. He, he's now riding around the world. Next week, he's starting uh, in 40 days. Literally, he's going to circumnavigate the globe in 40 days. 
So he, he's pretty cool. The main man that came up with the idea is actually an Irish man from originally from Tullamore, but he is a, now an adopted Clare man called Declan McAvoy. And Declan myself put this together. So he is um, he is uh, starting off on a South American adventure in a couple of weeks. And uh, he, he's just De- Declan McAvoy on Facebook. Watch out for him. And uh, Declan has, has ridden solo literally around the world from Ireland to Magadan to Alaska and right down to Central America. And we've got an Indian man called Deepak Kamath, also, also a very impressive rider. He's the only man that I know to ride a motorbike on the Antarctic. So he's literally shipped his bike down there and rode it across it, yeah. We're, some pretty cool fellas. Yeah. We have, we're also being very lucky, I mean, our, through our own network, and it just goes to show, you know, you think you, you're an ordinary person, you can't get to whoever. You can get to anybody you want if you push it hard enough. So some of your listeners might remember Long Way Round, which was made down in, in 2004 with the actor Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman. Yeah. Very famous, and they did Long Way Down, and now they're doing Long Way Up. But the cameraman from that was the third guy. The unsung hero, again, was from Switzerland, a guy called Claudio von Planta. And he is on board with us fully. He loves adventure, and he loves against the odds and uh, underdog kind of projects, so he's on board. And we have a local leash, um, up-and-coming rising star called Nisha Kettle, who applied for a, a local ad I had on our, on our Facebook, just looking for somebody to do a bit of video editing. And the guy is world class, so it's we're, we're yeah, nice, cool, yeah, brilliant. Um, where's your favorite place in the world then that you've been to? Well, every everybody asks, and I suppose the honest answer I can give you that is is for what reason, you yeah. know? I mean, my favorite place in the world for adventure and people has been Russia. Um, it's the place where I've had the most pain, the most accidents, the most trouble, the most hardship, the most mosquito bites. I've drank the most vodka, but <laughs> definitely for adventure and fun. And it doesn't feature on a tour, on a, you know, a, I was going to say a terrorist, I mean, on a tourist uh, list, but you know, it's, it's like the last frontier. It's super. Yeah, yeah. If I was to live anywhere, I would say I love to live in, in Slovenia because it has a bit of everything. Obviously, there's no place like home. But I remember reading a book of a guy called Marzlan Gander who wrote it in 1949. He was a world. He was a war correspondent and the world's first ever TV critic. In fact, in the book, he he wrote about a guy called John Logie Baird, who had this new technology which moved a shadow across the screen. And you know, he he, he obviously was the, the inventor of TV. <clears throat> but this guy had traveled all over the world at, in 1949, and he said, in conclusion, there there is no one place on earth that he has found that satisfies any man's needs forever. So I'd say the honest answer is it depends on your mood and on your time or whatever, but yeah. really travel is about travel all the time and forever. You have yeah. favorite spots that you like to come for different reasons. You like the sun, you like the scenery, you like the people or the food or whatever, but you, you tend not to stay in them forever. Brilliant. Cool, Gary. Before we wrap it up then, how can people reach out, follow along or get in touch with you? Sure. I was always delighted to, um, to talk to people about traveling and to help in any way we can. I love the uh, the bootstrapper idea that you're doing and hopefully you'll build a massive following and, and become a worldwide sensation. Hopefully. <laughs> because there's lots of people out there. Um, as You can find us easily on Facebook. It's it's One Eye on the World with the number one and then all the letters and words One Eye on the World. You'll find us on Instagram with the same thing. We have a YouTube channel that's a bit behind and a website that's a bit behind. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I love I love when people stick up a message on on the old Facebook to say, "Hey, heard you on whatever," or, or on Instagram. Either either of those things are the best way to get us. But it, it's you know never never think that your messages aren't being received well because when you're in a dark hole in the middle of Panama <laughs> or Costa Rica or wherever, it's said, "Oh, there's somebody from home or from wherever." Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a nudge on, you know, it's great. Brilliant, Gary. Thanks a million for coming on the bootcast, and I wish you the best of luck. With this, with this latest mission, and I know you're going to do it. So, thanks a lot, Eugene. Bring Best home the bacon. Thanks, Gary. Yeah, Cheers. Yeah. Bye, bye.